Here is the setup and all the equipment you're going to need for our titration. You're going to need your acid. For us, we're going to be using vinegar, and you'll be putting that into a beaker so you can transfer it. We have our pipette and our bowl. We will show you how to use this in another video. We have three Erlenmeyer flasks in which you're going to be doing your titration in. Make sure they are clean and dry. And yes, we do have a white paper towel for a reason, and we'll discuss that later. Here's our phenolphthalein. This is our indicator. This will help us tell us when our titration has completed. We'll show you how to use that in the titration. Here's the burette itself. So we have our ring stand with our burette clamp fastened in the middle. So make sure that it, when you're setting up your burette clamp, you put it through the middle. Then you're going to clamp your burette into the burette clamp so that it is stable. We have our funnel in which we'll fill up our burette, and then we have our waste beaker that we'll put any additional solution in. So we're going to talk now about how to actually use the pipette and a couple of little notes. This is the pipette itself. This is the pipette bulb. Very first thing I remind students of is when you get the pipette full, you want to go over to the sink. I'm going to use the waste beaker today. You want to make sure to blow out any additional moisture or solution that may have been left in it. So make sure that is very, very dry. The pipette itself is a highly precise instrument. You'll be using a two milliliter one. There is one mark on the pipette. And when the meniscus, the bottom of the meniscus actually hits that mark, it is exactly 2.00 milliliters. So do not drop those significant figure decimal places because this is a very highly precise instrument. I like to hold the pipette in my dominant hand and the pipette bulb in my non-dominant hand. I do use my thumb to cap the end. Some people prefer to use their finger. It's completely up to you. I'm gonna demonstrate for you now how to actually load the pipette and then to put it into our Erlenmeyer flask samples. So, we're gonna put the tip of the pipette into our solution. I hold the pipette again with my dominant hand and the pipette bulb with my non-dominant hand. Always point the pipette bulb away from you and down and squeeze it completely. Then put the pipette bulb on the end of the pipette. You'll get a good seal and you know that you have a good seal when the solution actually gets drawn up into the pipette. It'll go through the little bulb section and then you want to kind of aim for past the pipette marking. And this is where a lot of students end up getting very, very frustrated because the patient starts to get really tested. Then on the end, the opening, you'll find a nice little balance between internal and external pressure, enough so that you can actually get that meniscus, the water level or the solution level to drop slowly towards that line. And this takes a lot of practice and that's okay. Verify that the meniscus is right on that line. Right? And then hold it shut and transfer it over to your sample one. Now the manufacturer has promised us when we buy these pipettes that the solution that remains at the end, this piece of solution or this little volume of solution right here is not counted in the actual total volume of the pipette. So we will leave that solution right there. You'll see that the paper towels come in handy because we have a lot of excess solution. So I'll put the pipette there. Now that we have our sample in our Erlenmeyer flask, we're gonna add approximately 50 milliliters of water. You can measure it out in a 100 mil graduated cylinder. The water is not quantitative, which means that its actual volume does not influence the end result of the titration. It just truly allows us to see that there's solution in our flask. Very, very important, do not forget to add the indicator. I've had students in the past who do the entire titration and say, hey, how come I didn't get any results? and it's because they forget to add the indicator that will turn pink at a point that's actually past its equivalence point. So past the place where the moles of acid are equal to the moles of base, phenolphthalein turns pink in a basic solution. And we'll look at the titration itself and we'll show you 
what a very good, close to the equivalence point titration endpoint is and what well past the equivalence point titration endpoint looks like. Now we're going to learn how to properly fill up the burette. So first, what the burette looks like. You're going to read the method to read or fill your burette to the zero mark. Notice when on your burette, zero is at the top, 50 is at the bottom. So you will be filling your solution to the top of the burette. How to operate your burette, you have what's called the stopcock. The stopcock is what regulates the flow through the burette. When it is perpendicular, it is closed. It is when you turn it parallel, does it open and allow the solution to stream through. So please make sure during this whole process that your stopcock is closed and in the perpendicular direction. First thing we are going to do is what's called a wash. Okay, a wash helps us make sure that our uh, burette is clean and with the solution in which we are going to be working with. Whenever we fill up a burette, you always want to bring the burette down to eye level. So this is going to be different for everybody who's filling this up. All right, and what we mean is bring it below is when I am comfortably standing at the burette, I can see that zero mark, or actually it's a little bit below, below my eye level. So first thing I'm going to do is take my sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is what we're going to be using within the burette, and we're going to wash it. I'm just going to add just a little bit. Once I have a little bit in there, I'm going to unlatch, go to your waste beaker. And as you go through, you're going to spiral your burette, and that's going to coat the inside of your burette with the solution in which we are using for our titration today. And that is called a wash. Now we're going to fill it all the way up to the zero mark. So once again, it is below eye level. My stopcock is perpendicular, so I know the valve is closed. Put my funnel back on and grab your sodium hydroxide and fill. Pay attention as it gets closer to that zero mark so that you do not overfill your burette. And when I fill it, I'm actually going to go slightly above that zero mark. That way, I can release some of the solution into my waste speaker and get it as close to that meniscus to the zero line. So now, I'm going to raise this back up. Move my ring stand and put the waste speaker underneath my burette. Now I'm going to open the stopcock by making it parallel and just slowly I'm going to release it until the meniscus reads at the zero line. With enough technique you can learn how to do a titration drop by drop to get as precise as possible.